Aloha, I'm Terry Lilly, a marine biologist here in the Hawaiian Islands. I hope you enjoy my film. Oh. La Jolla Cove in Southern California is a unique and amazing snorkel and scuba diving site. In 1970, it was established as the La Jolla Underwater Park by the city of San Diego. It consists of a 6,000 acre marine life preserve. It's a no-take zone managed by Scripps Institute of Oceanography and the California Department of Fish and Game. The underwater park consists of four completely different marine habitats. Rocky reefs, kelp beds, sand flats, all the way to a submarine canyon that drops down over 500 feet deep. It is just teeming with marine life and is an incredible spot to see most of the types of species of sea creatures that live in Southern California. When you drop down below the waves in La Jolla Cove, one of the first things you're gonna see are big schools of these Garibaldi fish. They're one of the prettiest fish in the world. When they're babies, they're red with blue polka dots, and when they get to be adults, they're bright orange. They're a type of damsel fish, and they grow to be over a foot long. And because it's a no-take zone here in La Jolla Cove, all of the fish in marine life is extremely tame. This is California's state fish and they're protected all throughout the state of California. And when they lay eggs in the kelp bed, the males actually guard the eggs. When you're diving and you look at these Garibaldi, they almost don't seem real. A bright orange fish and kind of a dark brown background. Here's one of the babies that's orange with bright blue polka dots. As they get a little bit bigger, then they start losing their polka dots and some of the blue colors and then turn into the bright orange adults. Sometimes when you're diving in La Jolla Cove, in one hour you'll see 30 to 50 of these Garibaldi. People that come to La Jolla Cove for the first time are just mesmerized by them. Along with the Garibaldi are these kelp bass. These kelp bass can get almost two and a half feet long. They're very common in California. They're also called a calico bass because a lot of the fishermen like to catch them. But in the cove, they're completely tame because once again, it's a no-take zone. You'll literally see 100 or 200 of these sometimes on a dive. Little dinky babies that are only an inch long all the way through to adults that pretty much lose all of their bands and all of their stripes and just turn a solid brown color. These fish just hang out as lazy as can be in the kelp and just float around and then they ambush small fish and invertebrates, crabs, even young lobsters for food. They'll just come right up to you and look at you. When you get the camera right in their face with the bright lights, the one thing you notice is their eyes will glow green. When you go outside of the cove, there's not so many of these fish because the fishermen catch a lot of them. This is the barred sand bass. This one will get about a little bit over two feet long. These can live all the way down to a couple hundred feet deep or right up into the shallow waters, but they like the rocky reef and they like the sand. This is the gigantic black sea bass. It gets over 500 pounds. It's the biggest fish other than the big sharks that lives along the California coastline. These sea bass were almost extinct at one time, but in 1980 they were fully protected by law, and now they're coming back and they're getting to be fairly common once again. Sometimes they congregate in the cove and other places along the coast of California for breeding, and you can dive with four to five of these three to 400 pound fish. One of my favorites, actually one of everyone's favorites, is the sheephead. The sheephead is a type of wrasse, and like almost all wrasse, they all are hatched out as females. The females are kind of brownish red color. Once they get a little bit bigger, then some of them will mature into these red, black, and white males for the purpose of breeding. These fish can get 150 pounds. They follow you around like a puppy dog. They're very curious, and 
One of the reasons they kind of follow divers around is because divers were big and were cumbersome underwater. And we have a habit of scaring up some of the sea creatures that the sheephead grab and eat for dinner. One of their favorite foods is lobster. They like crabs, sea urchins, all kinds of different invertebrates. When they're down deep underwater, and some of these sheephead will go all the way down to 150 feet deep. When they're down deep, you notice that their red bands don't look very red. And that's because the red wavelength of sun doesn't reach down that far. So unless you have your bright dive lights on, these fish, when they're down 60, 70, 80 feet deep, are gonna look solid gray. This is a younger female that's kind of converting into a male, and then it's followed by an adult male here. This one here is grabbing some sea urchins or a crab, and then it got a mouthful of seaweed at the same time, so it's carrying it around. Again, these creatures are so much fun to dive with. They're so curious, and they just come up and look right into your face. We have the big cabazon that live on the reef. They're really valued by the coastal commercial fishermen. These cabazon can live down to 600 feet deep. They don't have any scales. They have the cirrus above their eye, and the baby cabazon are bright red, but then they turn brown to match the reef when they get to be adults. This is a black-eyed goby. This little fish only grows to about six inches long and lives on the mud. And then, from time to time, you'll see the biggest fish anywhere anyone ever gets to see in California, and that's a giant great white shark. These big great white sharks get up to 24 feet long and can weigh over 3,000 pounds. This is a little painted greenling fish. They get to be about eight or 10 inches long. They eat small invertebrates. They hang out on the reef and they dart around to try to avoid predators. And they also change colors. Sometimes they're brown, rust colored, red color. This is one of the banded guitar fish. This is one of the coolest fish you see in La Jolla Cove. They get to be about three feet long. And they're a type of ray and they just sit on the bottom and they remain very motionless, thinking they're camouflage. This is a shovel-nosed guitar fish that lives out on the sand. La Jolla Cove have a lot of big halibut, big California halibut. These halibut can get well over 100 pounds and three feet long, and they come into La Jolla Cove primarily to produce babies in the summertime. The halibut and fish like this starry flounder have their eyes that are on top of their head and their bodies flat. There are several different types of shark species in La Jolla Cove. This is one of the cutest ones, it's the horn shark. These horn sharks can get to be about four feet long and they just lay peacefully on the seafloor. They're really, 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 really cute and super, super tame so you can go right up close to them safely. These horn sharks have eggs and they take the eggs in this little egg case and they attach it to a piece of seaweed and it takes several months for these eggs to hatch. Sometimes people will find the egg cases up on the beach and they've in the past called them mermaid purses. These fish are looking for crabs and clams and different creatures that live on the seafloor. And they go all the way down to about 400 feet deep. But one thing great about La Jolla Cove, once again being a no-take zone, a lot of these creatures come into the cove to have their babies. And so you may go out one time of the year and not see very many of a certain species because they've gone back out to sea. And then another time of year in the summertime, there'll be quite a few of them. The horn sharks here, called horn sharks because of that big spike on their dorsal fin, it's actually really sharp and pointed. They won't hurt you and they're really, really, really fun to dive with. Very amazing creatures. When they have their babies and the babies hatch, they're so tame, you literally can go right up and just scratch one on the head if you want to. We have other shark species here in La Jolla Cove and there it's a really, really, really famous place by a place called the Marine Room. 
Along this stretch of beach, these six foot long leopard sharks come in in the summertime to have their babies. These sharks are harmless, but they will come right into where everyone surfs and snorkels, and there may be a hundred of them there at any given time. We have all kinds of other cool critters, including these big lingcod. These lingcod are ambush feeders. They have gigantic teeth. They can get up to five feet long and weigh over a hundred pounds. They sit peacefully on the seafloor and wait for food to come by. They usually like to eat octopus and then they lunge out at it and grab it with their sharp teeth and gobble it down. These lingcod can live all the way down to a thousand feet deep and they have green eyes that help them see down in the dark depths. Sometimes you'll see these lingcod in the summertime in two feet of water right in La Jolla Cove. You'll see big schools of these Sargo grunts that just peacefully swim around in the kelp forest. They get to be about 20 inches long. And then there's all kinds of different perch in La Jolla Cove. We have on the sandy flat areas in the little bit deeper water parts of La Jolla Cove near the deep water canyon, you find the California scorpion fish. This fish is really cool, but it's got, you don't want to ever touch it because it has 12 poisonous spines running down its back. And if you ever grabbed one of these and got spined, it could give you a ride to the hospital. We have all kinds of stingrays that also come in close to shore. This whole round stingray is a small stingray, but if you step on it, you could be in a lot of trouble. So when you walk on the sand, you want to shuffle your feet so you never touch one of these stingrays. These rays have electromagnetic sensors and they get clams and crabs and stuff that lives under the sand. This is a California moray eel that gets to be about four feet long. It's the only moray eel we have in La Jolla Cove. This seagrass that lives in the cove covers the reefs and it's really, really, really beautiful to watch, but it's incredibly good habitat. You have all kinds of different algae that grows in La Jolla Cove, and this is the giant kelp. It's the tallest algae in the world, and it's just filled with these big foot-long kelp fish. This algae, these kelp forests, are one of the most biodiverse habitats anywhere on Earth, and this giant kelp with the kelp floats can grow up to over a foot within just a few days and get to be 120 feet tall. This is another one of the kinds of kelp fish, but it lives pretty much in the kelp that grows right on the floor of the reef there. And as you can see, it just kind of moves back and forth with the waves and the surf, so it mimics the kelp. Most people just go right by these kelp fish and never see them. They're different colored ones. Matter of fact, on one dive, you may see five or six kelp fish and every one of them is a different color. But they're all really cool how they just float back and forth with the kelp either on the sea floor. There's laminaria kelp on the sea floor. There's a dozen other different species of kelp. And then the big giant kelp with all of these really cool floats that reaches up to the surface and spreads out on a canopy like a big underwater forest. This kelp is one of the most nutritious of anything on earth and it's actually harvested now up and down California for food. It's incredibly fast growth rate, but it's an unbelievable habitat for all the fish in La Jolla Cove. And it's really important to have a good thick kelp cover, whether it's the laminaria or the species on the seafloor or the giant kelp that makes a huge canopy where the sun shines through like you're hanging out underneath a bunch of hundred foot tall trees. La Jolla Cove has many beautiful invertebrates that cover almost the entire seafloor. These are beautiful red gargonians. They're not plants, although they look like it. They grow to be about a foot and a half tall. These are types of animals and they have these dark brown or dark red branches and then white polyps. 
The polyps are the little golden or white colored particles that you see coming out of the Gargonian branches and they're the live animal that's a filter feeder. We also have lots of abalone that live in La Jolla Cove. It's really a good success story there because they almost went extinct about 15 years ago due to a deadly disease. This is a big red abalone. They get all the way up to about 12 inches. We also have green abalones and pink abalones in the cove. Abalones are a type of marine snail that just has one shell and they feed on algae. These are the little brown cup corals which are next to the sea anemones and these beautiful colonies of cup corals called strawberry anemones grow all over objects that lay on the seafloor. They also grow a lot on piers. These anemones are all clones of each other. So you'll see one group that's red, one that's pink, and one that maybe is more brown. This is a chestnut cowrie, one of the only cowrie shells uh, that exist here in California. The mantle, the pretty part of the shell actually, is cleaned by the inside of the shell that comes out onto the top of the shell and cleans it. This is a decorator crab. These crabs you'll find running around on the seafloor or up on the pilings and they're really amazing because they'll put all kinds of different things on top of their back from sponges to algae and so they blend into the environment. Very slow moving. Most of the divers usually go right on by these and never see them. This is a big yellow crab with really, really super strong pinchers. These are the swimming crabs. They're really, really neat. They live mostly out on the sand and they have modified back flippers so they actually can swim quite quickly. They'll bury in the sand and then when you scare them, they'll get up and run away. This is a warty sea cucumber that's right underneath some of the Gargonians. This is a keyhole limpet. Another type of marine snail and the shells on the inside. So the soft part of the body is on the outside. The spiny lobsters are just all over the place here in La Jolla Cove. These lobsters can live up to 50, 60 years old. They breed in the cove. They produce thousands and thousands and thousands of eggs every year. They eat small marine creatures, mussels, clams, even seaweed. These lobsters are breeding in La Jolla Cove by the billions, which is really, really good because the eggs float out of the cove and then populate the entire coastline so people can catch lobsters. These are types of nudibranchs. The blue one is a dorid nudibranch, and this beautiful one here is called an opalescent nudibranch. We have Spanish shawl nudibranchs that are bright blue. Nudibranch means nude gills, nude bronchia. These are little sea slugs and they usually eat sponges on the seafloor. You can see how this one is on a piece of seaweed and floating around with a current. They also filter feed, but on top of their head, on top of their body, are these exposed gills. These creatures are highly colorful and they're also somewhat toxic, so most of the animals won't be able to eat them. This is one of the neatest animals in all of La Jolla Cove, is the little red octopus. Now this is a dwarf, the small octopus. It only gets about a foot across. One of the smartest creatures in the ocean because they can change colors, they can change size, they can change shape. These octopus have a brain in every one of their legs. So the legs actually can move independently of the entire body. That allows the octopus to go through the environment, sense the background of the environment and the texture, and change colors and shape accordingly. One of my favorite creatures out there, these octopus, so neat as you can see them up close in La Jolla Cove, Again, because this is a no-take zone, so people don't hunt or catch the octopus out there. The seafloor in certain parts of the sandy area of La Jolla Cove is filled with sand dollars. 
These are C pins that stick up from the sea floor. All types of different kinds of snails and shells. This is a slipper shell, which is similar to a little dinky abalone. Really beautiful sea slugs carpet the sea floor out there. Many different varieties and colors. We have uh, cone shells. These cone shells are actually poisonous. They have a poisonous spike inside. This beautiful red creature is called a fluted bryzoan. They're kind of soft to the touch and they grow in colonies and they really like to grow on piers like Scripps Pier. This is one of the beautiful sulfur sponges. You see these sponges growing in caves. This is one of the really cool spiny sea stars. And you can actually see how fast they can actually move across the sand when they want to. This is one of the whelk snails. And one of the biggest success stories, I believe, of La Jolla Cove is bringing back the lobster population all up and down the coastline. La Jolla Cove is a no-take zone, and so it's a baby farm, especially for millions of lobsters that are produced that populate the entire coastline that the commercial fishermen could catch and you might eat in one of the beautiful restaurants here in La Jolla. People from all around the world come to La Jolla Cove to snorkel and dive with the many sea lions. These big sea lions come in great numbers into the cove during the summertime to have their babies and also to breed. Here you see all the females that'll hang out together and their babies all hang out in nurseries. Each female is likely to have one or two of the pups and after the pups are born, the mom will stay and nurse with the pup for about 10 days. And then after that, she needs to go back out to sea and feed on squid and fish just like they do most of the rest of the year. When she leaves, the babies hang out in the nurseries. And then when mom comes back, the babies know the individual bark of the adult female. So even though the adult females may look similar and the babies look similar, it's really easy for them to communicate with each other through their individual types of barking. Here you have two of the cute little babies nursing on mom, and the babies will nurse for almost an entire year. The gestation for these sea lions is about nine months, and they usually have their babies in June and July up on the beach. And the beach is blocked off so people can't get down there and bother the babies and or the females when they're giving birth and nursing. The younger sea lions just absolutely love to play. They'll sit up on top of the rocks, fight each other, play. They're not hurting each other. It's just kind of play fighting. And they'll sit up on top of the rocks half the day and get warm. And then they'll jump in the water and zoom around with every one of us out there scuba diving or snorkeling. Years ago, these sea lions were eaten by the plentiful great white sharks and the orcas, the killer whales. Now most of those big predators are gone, so there's really a lot of these sea lions that congregate in La Jolla Cove. When you're scuba diving, they're just hilarious to watch. They're going to zoom right by you. They come right up and look into the camera. If you're a little skittish underwater as a diver, they may scare you because you have a 200 pound animal come zooming by that you're not expecting. They'll literally come back and nibble on the back of your dive gear. They'll hang on your shoulder and look at what you're doing. And then they fight and play underwater just like they do up on the rocks. It's a really, really, really fun to be able to be out scuba diving with 10 or 12 of these young juvenile sea lions that are hanging out with you. Here I'm actually back in a cave taking some movies of a lobster and this one sea lion comes in and it's just like, hey buddy, what are you doing back here? They, they're just incredibly curious. They, they don't know what the camera and the bright lights are so they want to come in and investigate all of that. It's really quite an adventure in La Jolla Cove when you can go scuba diving and snorkeling with Garibaldi and lobster and giant black bass and at the same time you have eight or nine sea lions zooming by you 
at 30, 40 miles an hour. Here one of them is grabbing some sand and playing catch with it. They'll eat some of the lobster from time to time. They'll even eat some of the abalone, but most of the time they feed out at sea. One of the very unique things about La Jolla Cove in Southern California is there's a few big green sea turtles that call La Jolla Cove home. Sea turtles are normally tropical reptiles. They get up to about 300 pounds. They can live to be well over 100 years. They eat seaweed. They can stay underwater for up to a half an hour and even sleep and take naps underwater. They're incredibly peaceful creatures. And it's only been in about the last 15 years that people are starting to see them now on a fairly regular basis in La Jolla Cove. Most of the time, we only saw these sea turtles way down in more warmer, more tropical Mexican waters. And then over here in Hawaii, we see them on a very regular basis. So it's really quite a treat to stumble on one of these big, magnificent reptiles feeding on the seaweed on the seafloor. Sea turtles are cold-blooded. So their body temperature is the same temperature of the water. And the water in La Jolla Cove in the winter gets pretty cold. So it's almost surprising to see these sea turtles living in this more cold environment. Thank you for watching our underwater adventure of La Jolla Cove. And please go to our webpage, underwater2web.com, and look at all of our amazing worldwide underwater movies.